So one tactic is to follow accounts, some will follow you back. One tactic is to use hashtags to be part of the larger conversation. You can get follows that way. Here's another way that you could be more effectively getting follows, but it requires the most work. So I have chosen to follow 37 accounts. Their tweets show up here, and as I browse the tweets, I see these numbers below them. Food52 posted this, add an understated dose of vintage charm to your kitchen with white glass mixing bowls. Okay, and at the bottom I see these icons and stats. If you see something on Facebook that you really enjoy, what's one way to show that? You like it, you click the little thumbs up like. Twitter has the same thing, but it's a heart icon. This has gotten eight likes. I think they even call them likes. They used to be called favorites. Eight likes. Yeah, likes. So whenever you click on any heart, it does a cute animation. You liked it. You can unlike it. It doesn't do a breaking heart, though. So I've liked that. What happened is, Food52 got a notification in their notification screen that said, Victor's Bakery liked your post. So I'm making Food52 aware that I exist. I saw their post, I clicked a like. Fame, 11 famous buildings from movies, TV, on Google Street View, I clicked like. So these accounts are seeing that I exist. And they get the notification, and they may then check who's that. If I go to my notifications, and I say, who is Bargain Leak? Remember, I clicked on it, I viewed the bio, saw the picture, saw the content, and thought, okay, I'll follow. There's a follow button. Um, that's one of the interactions I can do. From right to left, I would say, are um, least to most important, perhaps. Favorite. A favorite, I click on a favorite, and it's a bit disposable. I like that, I move on. What else is there? I click on that, what else is there? A next level up, actually they flipped them around, but we've also got a reply. This one, I don't know why Twitter doesn't show a statistic, because I can see this has gotten five likes, six retweets, I'll explain that what that is, but no comments. This is a comment, this is a reply. Twitter doesn't show you how many comments or replies it has. You have to actually click it to see it. Some of them have more comments than others. The point of this is that I can reply to an account, and again, that particular account gets a notification that says, um, Victor's Bakery reply to your tweet. This is a little bit of a higher level of interaction. A favorite or a like is a bit disposable, but a reply is a little bit more effort. A person can simply say, great, and move on. But a person could say, great recipe, I can't wait to try it. That's giving me a hint that that person might really be interested in my content. Therefore, I can follow them, and I might get a follow back. So if I'm replying to accounts, I'm showing these accounts that I'm much more serious, and I might get a follow back. Question? You mentioned the, the hashtag um, getting to a, uh, a larger conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if, uh, with the reply, uh, if you're replying with a hashtag, do you transcend into other uh, numbers of followers, or are you still limited to the same number of followers as a standard reply without a hashtag? If I do a reply, it will definitely be directed to this particular account. But if I also replied with a with a hashtag, that might be too harsh. Uh, but if I reply with a hashtag, <laughs> if I reply with a hashtag, I do get part of the larger conversation still, because then when someone searches that hashtag, my tweet could also appear, perhaps. So, so that's like a double. Hmm? There's a marketing benefit. Yes, the, the hashtags are one of the best ways to find an audience, build an audience, keep an audience. Um, so it is useful to use them, not to overuse them, however, 
you know, less than three hashtags. But usually with a reply, I wouldn't really hashtag it, depending on the tweet, uh, because maybe that reply really was meant much more for the original tweeter, not for everyone. So if I add the hashtag, I could open the conversation to many more people that might not be what the original poster wanted. So always check the... always think about that. <clears throat> we've got favorites, we've got replies, and we've got retweets. If I like this tweet so much, I want to basically endorse it and share it with my followers. Right now, I've already gotten like three followers. And if I click that retweet button, I can click it, and then I can simply send that tweet, basically, to my followers. Or I can also add a little commentary to it. So I'll have my commentary plus their original tweet. I'll show you both ways. So I'll simply do a retweet. All my three followers could have seen that. Because as I'm browsing here, some of these are marked as retweets. Right there. I followed that Gravy Design. That's Gravy Designs, and they retweeted Megan and Bureau. So I saw Megan's content. I never followed Megan directly, but I, I was exposed to it. I saw more of that content from another account. That's what I want. That's how I'm saying. I might only have five followers, but if one of those followers has a thousand followers, and they retweet me, I might have reached 1,005 followers. So I want retweets. And the thing about social media really is that you give what you get. You give follows, you get follows. You give favorites, you get favorites. You give retweets, you get retweets. Not quite proportionately, unfortunately. It's a game of numbers. The more you engage in social media, the social and social media, the more you'll get that back. If you tweet something once a week, but you spend every day, Monday through Friday, replying to people, or favoriting people's stuff, that's going to help build your audience also. Again, that's the part that takes a lot of effort as well. You're being social on the social media. These accounts that you're following, or what if you do a search? What if I search that cakes again, that cakes hashtag? I see who has most recently tweeted about cakes. E cake zone, six minutes ago, tweeted that coupon and then I could give a favorite I could give a reply I could give a retweet and they will get a notification Victor's Bakery favorited your tweet then they could favorite something back which is nice they could reply back which is nicer they could retweet which is even nicer or nicest of all they could click the follow button because then that's building my captive audience that's building my people that could actually follow through Along those lines, what I like to do, simply giving blind likes and such is not going to work. So I, I'm, I've got this bakery account, and I've tweeted, I mean, I've favorited this tweet about Star Wars, but I've also favorited a very big account with 6 million followers. I probably will not get a follow back. Some accounts are so big, they get a lot of activity, and they have that setting turned on over here, remember? They've got that setting that says, only notify me from those that I've made connections with, tailored. Only those that I've chosen to follow back. Mashable most likely has this set like this, so that they're not inundated with all of this activity. Um, The, um, the, the next sort of level up of, of this interactions, because I want these interactions, I want favorites, likes, retweets, and such. The next level up of me giving them is like this. What I like to do is, and I, like I said, I wish that Twitter would give you a number here, because it would make our job easier. If you click on a tweet, usually the white area or the reply button, if you click on the white area of a tweet, it opens up to show this person tweeted to them. The link doesn't work. 
if I tweet, if I look at the tweet, I'm trying to find a food. Okay, here's Eater. If I click on that one, people might have replied, and there's no reply. So you don't see it until you actually click it. So I wish Twitter, Twitter would add that stat to not waste our time. What I'm trying to look for is a tweet that has some activity, like this one, a brief history of Kansas City barbecue. Hopefully that's got a reply. Nope. But what I'm looking for is people that were passionate enough, passionate enough to reply to a tweet, which gives me the... Um, the hint that someone is really interested in something so that I can interact with them for more of a possibility for me to get follow backs. Okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson always has a lot of people. Let's say here, okay. Um, so if I, he's got 13,000 retweets on that tweet, 23,000 likes on that one tweet, no stat about how many replies, but I, if I click on the tweet it opens up and it shows all of these people have replied. Let's say that I'm looking at a tweet from you know some sort of food account. These people took the time to reply to that original tweet to an account about baked goods. My company is about food and baked goods. I could reply to a particular person in that conversation. So, Denise, if I reply, this is automatically going to be directed to the original poster, Neil Tyson, and Denise. You can remove that, of course, and say, we were so sad to hear of his passing. And if I tweet that, Denise would get the notification not Neil, uh, because I removed him from the conversation. I removed his name from the conversation. But Denise would get this notification. Um, and Denise could then further reply to me, favorite my um, tweets, or better yet, follow me. Here's more of a food-related tweet. My company is food-related. I could go view that tweet. You can click on the date of the tweet also. But I'm looking at this tweet in this screen, and these are all the people that reply to that tweet. These are all potential people that I could further interact with, especially if they are nice people. Um, Michael Week, for example. I could reply to Michael, and Michael will get a notification. And then Michael may reply to me. Worst case scenarios could be, who are you? Leave me alone. Doesn't happen as much. If you add nice replies to people that are tweeting nicely, you'll get niceness back too. You give what you get. If you get negative, you're going to get negative tweets back. If you post positive tweets, you potentially get more positive tweets. So this tactic is the one that my company uses a lot. We follow accounts related to the client. We look at what they're tweeting and look at what those people are interacting with the original tweet. And those are the people that we're going to interact with. Neil deGrasse Tyson is probably not going to follow us. But Eric could. Marak could. Neil could. Linda, all of these people that are actually interacting about this food item could interact with us. So yes, you are going to reply to random people. People that you don't know. You're going to reply to them nicely. You're going to interact with them nicely. You're going to tweet something that is interesting or funny or, or that they find useful. That's how you're going to build an audience more effectively, finding new people to follow you. And it takes practice. And if it takes, you know, to get away from the fear of interacting with a brand new stranger. So she said, this makes me nervous. And I'll say, not as nervous 
minus broccoli, minus broccoli, broccoli, minus broccoli cookies word. Tweet went off to her notifications. Worst case scenario, she replied, leave me alone. Worst case scenario, she'll probably reply with a laugh or a smile or something else. She might favorite my tweet. She might retweet it. She might send my tweet to her followers. How many does she have? One thousand six hundred thirteen. I could get my funny baked goods tweet sent out to sixteen hundred. Again, reaching more people than the three than only the three that I have. The caveat, of course, is, well, you are replying to random people. Um, I take the extra step to also check out their profile. Are they a spam account? Are they weirdos? Are they mean people? So this does take effort. It's a full-time job, social media marketer. But it is effective. In my company, when we get hired to do this for clients, we set aside, based on all of the contract and everything, how are we going to manage their Twitter account? Because it still all then comes back down to, are we going to manage a social media account as a dialogue or as a monologue? Monologue, what does that mean? One person talking to one person. I'm talking to you. Monologue. Dialogue. What's a dialogue? Back and forth. Back and forth. So if I'm tweeting something from my account, from my client's account, only as a monologue, I'm only putting a new picture, I'm only putting a new quote, I'm only putting a new video, but I'm never responding to people's tweets, I'm never trying to engage with new people, I'm not running social media as effectively as, I, as you could, I believe. I believe you should use social media as a dialogue, not a monologue. You want to engage with the people that are trying to engage with you to show that you're a real company, so that you can get follows, retweets, replies, favorites, to build an audience. Right here, DB. Only 10 followers, no real bio filled in, but let's say the account passes muster. I'm going to say here, they say, I wonder if these taste good on apple slice with fennel. I'm going to say, I'm or we're sure it tastes better on a glazed donut. Again, smileys and all of that to help, to help people don't know what you're being sarcastic or mean and such, they don't pick up the verbal cues from a verbal conversation. So if you put in a, an emoji or a smiley, it helps a person understand the tone of your tweets on any social media. And you can get those emoji characters from your mobile device or if you go to the website getemoji.com, you can copy and paste them. And get these emojis here and copy that. Get emoji.com and then reply. Nature is awesome. Emoji. Just copy and paste. Get emoji.com. So as we come to the end of the main lecture, you should be seeing that it's very important to be social on social media, not just post a brand new tweet once a week, once a month, once a day. Also get social. Do searches, do hashtag searches. Look at the accounts, look at the replies and, and content of the accounts that you're following. interact with the people that are interacting. Uh, 
Um, and uh, the more you do it, the more you'll get followers. In the time of this class, I've gotten three followers. A journey of 100 miles starts with the first tweet. So I've got 15 tweets so far at, one, at this moment right now. You might end up with lots of tweets. That's fine. It's content that you're putting out there. Because then when someone does a Google search, the best pie recipe, and you tweet it at some point, our best pie recipe, your tweet could show up. Your tweet then could get you more traffic to your website. And this and many other, this network and many other networks share the same sort of a concept. Be active, post content. When we look at Google Plus and Facebook next time, what we learn there can also apply back to Twitter. What we've learned here will apply forward to the other networks with variations. So as we wind down, this class and most of my classes don't have homework. So there's no homework for this class. You don't get a certificate at the end. You get this knowledge that you can apply directly, hopefully. So um, there's no homework, but I'm going to highly recommend by the time you come back next time, hopefully you've used Twitter a little bit more, not just put it down and pick it up when we come back next time, because next time we're going to talk about Google+. Use it, make mistakes, try it, download the free app, ch check out Twitter on the mobile device, play with it, because practice makes perfect. If this was a test account that you no longer want, up on the settings menu, you will see in the settings menu on the main account view, at the very bottom of account, all the way at the bottom, deactivate my account. If you no longer want this Twitter account, go to settings and go to deactivate my account and it'll go away. I would recommend maybe don't deactivate it just yet, maybe keep it around till the end of the course in three weeks. Play with it, practice with it, ask questions. Little by little you get more comfortable at it. Next time I'll talk about also things, well how do you manage multiple accounts? I need, a, I need to manage my Twitter and my Facebook and my Google Plus. Isn't there a way to handle them all at once? There is. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but I want to wrap up at this point, have a little lab time if anyone needs individual help and such. Any general questions? Yes? So if somebody's not on Twitter and you want to try and get them on the Twitter to, so you can work with them, it's just, does anything here, can you put their email in somewhere and says, look, come join me on Twitter? Uh, find friends. The closest to that is under find friends. So if you go to settings, find friends, and you connect your your mail account here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just right. email them and then. Okay. You can email them directly, or you can also connect here and see who's already connected. And then the Twitter logo will go with it, and maybe yeah. ask them to join. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wrap this up, and uh, we'll have some lab time. When we come back next time, we'll talk Google+.